Hi, I'm Peter Hackett. I'm the founder and director of the Institute for Altitude Medicine in Telluride, Colorado, and a professor at the University of Colorado Medical School. In the textbook Wilderness Medicine, I did the first chapter, which is on high altitude medicine. I was a young doctor in Nepal. I was 27 or 28 years old, uh, working with the Himalayan Rescue Association, and I was very impressed by the lack of knowledge about high altitude illness in the medical literature. There was only two papers, and, and I was seeing it every day. So I was in a unique position to make a contribution, and that piqued my interest. But then uh, I had this one episode of a young doctor who was the same age I was, about 27 years old, who died from pulmonary and cerebral edema from altitude illness. And I got to him while he was still alive, but we couldn't save him. And uh, that's the, the first time and the last time that I've gotten to a patient who had altitude illness who was still alive and didn't make it. And it made a major impact on my life because I decided I was going to devote my career to figuring out why this fellow died, who was a perfectly healthy fellow, just going to high altitude, and making sure that that would never happen again. Paul and I met in uh, Yosemite in the 70s, and we were both founders of the Wilderness Medical Society in the early 80s. And uh, the, the need for a textbook was immediately obvious when we started uh, having meetings and conferences about wilderness medicine. And Paul was the driving force and invited me to join him. So high altitude is a major part of wilderness medicine since most of the high altitude spots in the world are remote and in wilderness areas. So the main issues are altitude illness, which can strike anybody going to high altitude over 9,000 feet. And our, our goal is to educate and prevent deaths and morbidity from that problem, especially pulmonary edema. And then a very hot topic right now is how people with different medical conditions like diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, can manage their illnesses and enjoy a lifestyle that includes wilderness travel, mountaineering, diving, etc. Another hot topic is uh, the exact science behind what is it about lack of oxygen that causes these clinical syndromes. And that has applications not just for wilderness travelers, but for patients with heart disease and lung disease and sea level too. So I myself am an avid mountaineer, I've spent a lot of time at high altitude. And Anyone who does a lot of high altitude mountaineering eventually is going to get hit with one of these altitude illnesses. And it happened to me on um, Alma de Blom, which I was climbing a number of years ago at Camp 3, where I developed uh, high altitude pulmonary edema. And uh, had this in the middle of the night during a storm. I we couldn't get down. I had to stay up all night. I thought I was going to die. My teammates. I thought it was going to be terribly ironic to witness the death of one of the experts in high altitude pulmonary edema from high altitude pulmonary edema. But fortunately, he made it through the night and was able to get down the next day with some help. But it, it certainly made an impression on me and um, and also taught me I have to always be prepared with the right medications and things because I wasn't at that time. So. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, avalanches, lightning, uh, cold injury, altitude illness, all of us that have spent a lot of time in the mountains get exposed and get into trouble with these things from time to time. Well, I, I, you can't find a better resource in the world than the textbook of wilderness medicine edited by Auerbach because it has everything in it and in one place and it has to to be in every library of every clinic that's in a wilderness, near a wilderness area, every national park, every high altitude area, every desert area. I mean, it applies around the world and throughout the country. And um, there's just no other resource available that has that depth 
of, of material. And Paul and uh, Elsevier has put a lot of work into keeping it updated and, and making it very authoritative. So it's, it's the place to go.